and welcome everybody here in Twitch Chats and everybody on YouTube for some Abzan Hero today. We have three decks that we're going to be playing in ranked, three decks that we've played uh, throughout this this week or like the last like four or five days that I was pretty impressed with and wanted to get back to. And so that's what we're going to be doing with Abzan Hero, the Is It Alliance, and Golgari Aggro. You may remember the Golgari Aggro from Best of One. We're going to be trying it in Best of Three. There was a lot of people that wanted us to play it in Best of Three. And Is It Alliance, we didn't we didn't necessarily do that well, but I had the wrong top end with the deck, and I thought it could do pretty well with changing the top end. So we're doing that. <clears throat> we're updating that like we did before, and we'll be trying it out. Um, as far as uh, yesterday, those of you all watching on YouTube, sorry for not having any videos yesterday. For some reason, my internet service went out just during the, the random, just during the day randomly, and it came back on about halfway through when I would normally be streaming. But then I just instead of having a half stream, I just ended up taking the whole day off and got a lot of other work done around the house and still had a productive day. But sorry for the just the the off day that was not meant to be an off day. <clears throat> but anyway, um, let's start with Abzan Hero. This deck. Hey, what's up, Papa Tim? This deck, I think, has a lot of very good interaction for what the format looks like right now. The That's our second sub of the day. The format has, you know, a lot of artifacts and enchantments, and especially like the Jun Sacrifice decks, you know, like Witches Ovens and um, uh, Trailer Crumbs. I almost said Once Upon a Time. And stuff like that. And this deck has a lot of good ways to, to destroy those. We just have the one Knight of Autumn in the main, but there's two more in the sideboard. We got Golgari Queens in here, which Golgari Queens is just a really good Planeswalker against those kind of decks. We got Mortifies to destroy enchantments. Of course, we have Assassin Trophies um, as well. Sideboard, we could even have some Kayas. A lot of really good interaction um, for just all types of permanents for artifacts, enchantments, and creatures in here. Plus, I really love to spark. You know, if you're talking about a deck like Jeskai Fires or um, the Simic decks with Ambusher and Nissa and stuff like that, I think just and uh, like the ramp ones with Cavalier of Thorns, I think just sparks just a really good quality card. We got two in the main, two more on the board. Um, so good stuff there. Uh, we can go wide with Hero of Precinct One, which is pretty nice. Uh, we just got some really powerful top end cards with Kenrith, Liliana, Garrick, Ugin. Kethis has always just been an all-star in this deck, just making basically everything that costs four or more. These are all legendary cards, and so Kethis makes them all cost cheaper. So then our curve, is, like these are all threes and four and five, and then Oath of Kaha even only costs two mana. So just a lot of really good stuff going on with this deck, and I think it's pretty well positioned just because of all the good interaction. So let's give it a try. So we're going to be playing it, like I said, over in Ranked. Let's see, Traditional Standard Ranked, uh, Abzan Hero. Here we go. Why don't I play any Casualties of War? Because I just like the, the Planeswalkers, is the six drops more. I think we already have good enough interaction for the other permanents at six mana. I think the, the Planeswalkers can take over. And Casualties is always a six drop, where the Planeswalkers can be five drops with Kethis. Yeah, Rogobop, yes. Um, my, uh, I have a Discord channel. Um, exclamation point Discord gets you there. For those of y'all watching on YouTube, the in the link to all the videos is the Discord, where there's a lot of people in there. It's just, you know, it's a Discord's basically like a, a chat room kind of thing, but there's there's a, a bunch of different chat rooms in, in the entire channel. Um, and in there, there's announcement section, and that's where I was announcing what was going on and everything. So yeah, if you ever want to stay up to date with updates, <laughs> for lack of a better word, that's the place there is Discord.
<clears throat> so what's what we got with Blood Crypt Fable Passage? Is this just John's sacrifice? I, of course, could have kept Assassin's Trophy open. Assassin's Trophy is not really the type of card you want to cast right away. To ramp your opponent, though. So I'll just play the shock land in tapped, save the life. Othakaya and, and Golgari Queen, of course, pair really well together. I'm just sacrifice the Othakaya to draw a card now. Goose with the attitude. Thanks, Bivalence. Thanks for the donation there for Abs Animals for later on. <laughs> Is there such a thing with a goose without an attitude? It's a good question. That is a good question uh, I think I'm just gonna play the Golgari Queen sack the Othakaya to draw a card yeah I think we're just gonna do that I could destroy a witch's oven instead and then have like Knight of Autumn destroy the other witch's oven next turn Right now, Witch's Oven isn't threatening. Okay. Because <clears throat> we can work towards ultimating this Golgari Queen also. Nine's not too difficult to go to get to when you're going by twos. Yep, yeah, you get Siren Storm Tamer again with that artisan event. Come on, opponents. Very easy li lines. We can go. There we go. Sacrifices must be made from time to time. If we don't draw the six land next turn, it's possible I sack the three three to try to hit the six land for Liliana. No, nope, not anymore. I won't have a three three. I'm just going to go ahead and sacrifice this 1-1 token. It's a 
good part about Hero Precinct 1 with Golgari Queen also can, can just can just kind of turn into you play a multicolor spell, you draw a card. Instead of making a 1-1 one, because one, your random card in your deck is going to be more powerful than a 1-1. One, one. And of course we have lethal because the Golgari Queen ultimate. Uh, we'd have two creatures, and if either one of them would deal damage to the player, they would lose the game. They would have one blocker. The game is over. All right, so extra Knight of Autumns, extra Kaya's. Questing Beast is kind of annoying. I don't know if I want extra to Sparks. We could just go with an extra Trophy. Which is just going to be good in a variety of situations. Kind of have too many cards that I want to play now. I guess I'm going to take out... I think I'm going to take out Legion's End, which is kind of weird. I, I usually always play Legion's End in this matchup, but I think I may just be replacing it with the Orzhov Usurper. But I, don't, I guess I don't really like how everything costs three, though. I could take out, I'll just play two trophies. Could take out the Oath of Kaya's. It's very good against Mayhem Devil, but it's not special against anything else. I think Kaya's Wrath can be a, a catch up spell here. I don't know, maybe I don't need the Paradise Druids if I'm going to have this much good, cheap interaction. Get Legion's End in instead. I want to take out one of these top cards, but I don't know which one. I want to take out one and play one Othakaya. Could have been the second Garrick. Yeah, it's probably the second Garrick. Garrick is so amazing with Tulsimer. Um, but anyway, I, I don't think we need the Kaya's Wrath for this matchup. I think we're going to be fine without it. On oh, the Kaya's Wrath more against the green creature decks. Or... Um, or like the black aggro decks, like like Mardu Knights and stuff like that, Rakdos Knights. <laughs> no, not wearing the, not wearing the same tie we did two days ago for the nineteen one. So now I guess I'm not wearing my lucky tie. I know, you're still upset how that ended, I know, right? Draw one land, and that game was over. Because we were going to play Teferi plus Nexus and just go on from there. And we were going to, like, that game was over if we drew a land. I prefer an untapped land here to be able to go hero plus end or dispark next turn instead of the temple.
Midnight Reaper, the three mana creature. It's kind of in the in the middle here. the Twitch Rhyme sub. Third wonderful sub of the day. Storm, Veil, Veil of Summer is legal for that event, Storm. Veil of Summer in the Historic Artisan event. <laughs> it is just best of one, though. I'm not expecting people to be playing Veil of Summer in their best of one deck. But you never know. Somebody wants to be ahead of the curve. I was going to say, that Midnight Reaper would not be a good attack there. But Kethis is awesome. We can... We, get, we can play the Golgari Queen for three. So we can double spell. Our deck's sweet. Yeah, Kethis is real good. Yep. Nothing wrong with the 3 4 for 3, as we've seen with Bronted on. But then, also having that 3 4 for 3 be like a mana creature that you don't have to tap. And then a mana creature that you can use multiple times in a turn. And then also let it have the ability to be a card advantage engine, also, replaying cards from your graveyard. It's an all star. And we're one and zero. <laughs> yeah, and Kethis gives advice to elves. Get to do that too. We got some temples. Are you a land? Go to the bottom. Are you a spell? Keep. Oh no, we about to get bolted. Yeah, we get bolted. Uh, so what? My curve is Mortify into Golgari Queen into Kenrith. Not sure exactly how that's going to work with this Temple of Skylands. A few shock lands to make it hurt. That's what we call a good hand. Triple one drop. One each of three different colors. Is 
It's a very good hand. Just went from good to very good. Well, games two and three, I will not keep a hand that ha does not have a play until Mortify, I don't think. Twenty-five land. Hmm. Do I have good enough power to end games? with this, with taking all the six mana walkers out. I think so. Yeah, we, we still have some cards that can end games. Uh, I do like Kaya's Wrath. I think if I was on the draw, I would be mulliganing, but we're on the play. You can maybe get away with this. Come on, lands. <laughs> last last game, I just need I needed spells. This game, I need lands. Okay, it's a land. Sorry. Need land. Needs to be a white or black source. Claim contender's nice. It's playing a threat out that's not even actually really playing a threat. You get to replace it. Get to replace itself. That's very nice. My opponent's had very good hands. We got enough lands now, deck. Can we get this Kenrith back? We're good on the lands now. Hey, Vagabond. GG's. Alright, let's take a look at... Hmm. Do I just want to play Soren? What do we got going on over here? Land, bottom. I think I'll just do this. Let's look at their hand. 
All right, so they do have the Ember Cleave. It's not great. That was a oh, man. That's a tough draw. <laughs> yeah, really, really impressive showing here for the Marty Knights. That was a pretty perfect card to draw. I didn't tr trophy the Midnight Re Reaper because I thought if I trophied the Midnight Reaper, it'd be pretty easy. Like, they draw another card there, it'd be pretty easy for them just to draw another creature, and then my Soren's gone. Gotta hope they don't have any removal or anything. No blocks. I want all blocks. So first strike will kill the two heroes, and then regular damage would kill all the 1-1s, one and I take one. But the Midnight Reaper is gone. I need to draw removal. That thing, you cannot possibly block a Naughty the Heaven Legion on a number cleave. It just, it's not possible. Kind of the same with Foulmire Knight. Wow. This is rough. Wow. I didn't think we were losing that. You know, whenever we saw their hand, Midnight Reaper, Ember Cleave, we had the trophy for the Ember Cleave. I thought we were good. That duress to take my trophy. And then us only drawing lands. You know, like we didn't draw we didn't draw a spell after that. My opponent drew a lot of spells. <clears throat> oh well. One and one. I think we'd be pretty favored there if we just play that match over and over. I think we have really good removal, but we don't win them all. <laughs> I know, right, Forks? That was rough.
<sighs> this looks like the, th the third game in a row with the opponent having like one of their 95% best hands. At least the first two turns were. That land comes into play taps next turn. Pell Collector is better than Huatli's Raptor, but I think if they have another Huatli's Raptor in hand, that would be devastating. I guess if I take if I take the Pell Collector though, would another Huatli's Raptor be that devastating? Not really. But more more Pell Collectors, I don't really care about. Hmm. I think it's more likely that they have another Huali's Raptor in hand than a Pelt Collector. Hmm. They had a Serpent. Alright, needed to take Pell Collector. That was the wrong choice. Uh, I don't know about this. Uh, Stone Coral Serpent is just really, really good against me, considering we're just a complete multicolored deck. That's a frustrating one to play against. Ugin doesn't kill it either. I probably should have just taken the Stone Coral Serpent because, because of that, because I don't have other good options for it. Yeah, Serpent's really annoying. We got hero tokens. This is George Ezra Budapest. Possible to play Garrick next turn if we draw a land. If not, hero plus oath. I 
Yeah, probably just hero plus oath. And then I guess we just take out the flyer. Hey, Bat. Oh, yeah, yesterday was very, was very productive. All right, well, can't attack with Lovestruck Beast anymore. Now we can attack with Lovestruck Beast. So, Legion's ending the Stone Coil Serpent. I guess we just do that. Allows me to play the other Paradise Druid, so we we could definitely have Garrick next turn. Alright, well they can't attack with Lovestruck Beast anymore. Unless they just draw a 1-1. All right, Garrick, do your thing. Uh, you just not draw a 1-1? One, one? Just not draw a 1-1. One, one. That's all I'm asking. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7... Me down to two. If I ultimate Garrick, then they can have their giant killer kill my creatures. Yay. 
we're gonna have to go wide through this love struck beast but this looks over yeah <clears throat> next turn like the kaya eats the three three the vraska was going to kill the two three um i would have life link with my creatures i was going to just attack out they probably block probably block the hero precinct one i just have the soren bring it back i think that game was going to be over there Apostle of Purifying Light. Do I even want Assassin's Trophy? It's a two mana card. Yeah, it, dest it destroys stuff. Uh, the Great Henge. Hands slow. I don't know. This could lose, but I don't think this is a mulligan. But this could lose. Not looking good. Those are not good draws. A double innkeeper. This looks very bad. Hey, Knuckle. So if I play Kethis this turn, I could Tulsimer next turn or Tristani. That's if Kethis survives. Kethis will likely survive. We haven't seen anything that would kill a Kethis from them yet. Yeah, Kethis animation is really cool. Just an overall very cool card. See, I, I wonder if I play Tristani if they have another giant killer in hand. If I play Tristani. Hey, Yud. Thanks for keeping that sub going. 13 months. 
Welcome back. I do have Kenrith that can replace stuff. I'm gonna just Othakaya first. This is kind of a... I mean, this is not a good turn for me. My opponent's not having the best turns any either, though. Like, that wasn't a great turn for them. Oh, dang, QQ, your power's out? No. Oh. But Yud is done with finals, that's good. If I attacked with, with everything, they would be able to have Stone Coral Serpent and Tithe Taker double block one of these things, and then they would have just had it. So basically, Tithe Taker would have killed one of these things, but maybe with Kenrith, that's not the worst thing. What do they got in hand over there? Doesn't seem like much. No, really does not seem like much. Hey, what's up, Pit? 377 a month streak. Staying on that. Thank you, Pit. <clears throat> Level up. All right, we're two and one. Yeah, Stone Coral Serpent's just a really good card. It was awesome for us in the Mono White Formation deck that we played the other day. And it's been very good for us in uh, the Affinity decks in the past. Just a good solid card. Wait, you're saying your power is out, but you're not at home right now? So how do you know your power is out? Maybe it... Maybe it's not. Maybe it's back on. But yeah, no. Power out when at 25 degrees outside. That is not fun. Understand that. I'm risking this attack here. Get pressure on him. Come on. <laughs> Why can't we draw land now?
No land. Azado, what happened with your power yesterday? He said it was out at your place, but it was like 90 degrees outside. Hey, what's up, Scooty? Thanks for the Twitch Prime sub. I appreciate that. That's sub number six on the day. Looks like I'm behind one here. Looking for more lands. Something to deal with the Chandra. Chandra's gonna wreck me here. I'm Chandra, the immolation sensation. Get out of my way. Or, you know, don't. You'll pay for that. Couldn't have been allies. Uh, three lands. Let's get toasty. There's not much we can do with three lands. Ridiculous. I don't want Othakaya, but there's not like a ton that I necessarily want. Maybe just play these Knight of Autumns because Lucky Clover is pretty awesome. Um, Dispark isn't normally that great against them, but it's it's really Dispark is just for whatever they grab with the the blue card with the Fae of Wishes. Gonna get an extra Legion's End in here because Edgewall Innkeeper still broken. Uh, yes, brother, I am playing Abzan Wolves. It's it's not up on Stream Decker yet. It was a late donation deck um, that I just got. So I, I don't have the list up on on. Stream Decker, yet. Yeah, I think we're going to have to fix a couple of things about the list. It doesn't have enough lands and has too high of a curve. But, uh, yeah. I ba basically won't be making changes or posts until then, where the, the person that donated for it will be back on stream.
yourself. Adventure cards are really good. They just play so many cards and they still have, you know, eight cards in hand. I have three cards in hand. I have eight. Now ah, they still have seven cards in hand. Hey, Soul Farmer. I'm doing good. And hey, Errol. Um, doing good. And uh, Hawkeye is is doing awesome. He's he's doing a whole lot better. He's uh, much more energetic and everything now. Um, his blood work all came back very positive. Or like like that everything's good. Parappa the Unwrappa, 11 months. Now, now, don't be pushy. Getting there. I don't want to um, don't want to minus the Liliana even though I would have been able to draw a card and just get rid of these things because then it would be um, vulnerable to Bone Crusher Giant. So yeah, Haw Hawkeye's doing great. So now they got 11 cards and 8 mana. As y'all know, this is my least favorite deck in standard. No Golgari Sacrifice, no. We have a Golgari Aggro, which is a, um, which is an adventure deck. All right, have a good night, Soul Farmer. No way to treat a lady. Are these things not gone? I mean, how... Okay, so these are all just the adventure parts? They have that many creatures? Ugh. Yeah, I thought there was at least going to be something that would have got exiled for good, but I guess not. Like one of these bone crushers, I, I thought they didn't play. One, I guess they played the the bone crusher that was the adventure one. Hey, Dark Claw, doing great. Happy Thursday. My plan was to play Hero than Knight of Autumn, but. You know, going double hero means I have less defense, kind of, for Liliana. I 
Again, don't want a minus four because now even just the, the brazen borrower. So that's how it is. Can but can put a bunch of pressure on Liliana. Let's start at a sizzle and see if you make it to the inferno. That was pretty awesome for them. Uh, that's what I really need is more awesome stuff for my opponent. They still have nine cards in hand. <laughs> I'm not supposed to beat nine cards. No, my, my opponent played all of the all they they've already played all of these adventure they've already played the adventure part of every single one of these cards. It wasn't just that Into the Wild sent them there. I think. I'm not sure. They don't they don't help differentiate it very well, so I, actually I don't know what's going on. That's the last one of those, right? Yeah, that's the fourth one. I need that Liliana. That Liliana was was my way to win this. Let's give him trample. Come on. 
That's what happens when you just have nine cards in hand the entire game. Uh. That's definitely my least favorite deck to play against. It's just... Just don't like the design of these adventure creatures. It's just not interesting, basically. It's just a, a wizard's pre-con for Throne of Eldraine. Just put all your adventure creatures together. Good job, you built a deck. All your cards are two-for-ones, but that's not good enough. We'll give you a one-mana... Creature that makes all your cards three for ones, and a two mana card, colorless card to make all your, your cards three for ones also. Because having all your cards being two for ones wasn't good enough. So I think we have to put back Kenrith or Tulsimer. And it really depends on like what we're playing of, of which one we would rather have down there. I I don't think there's anything wrong with Cauldron Familiar. I don't think the Cauldron Familiar Witches Oven, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I th think people just dislike it because they never put in like an auto sack food type thing and so it just takes a while to do. But that is not, there's nothing wrong with Cauldron Familiar Witches Oven as a design. Perfectly reasonable. Uh, I don't. I'm not doing anything like that, Bertilux. Yeah, me. Yeah, me too. It's just a design. Yeah, I. Yeah, Cauldron Familiar. Or sorry. Uh, yeah, Fires of Invention. <clears throat> kind of breaks the game of Magic a lot more than Cauldron Familiar does. I'm not sure if that's actually better than just attacking with Kethis and playing Kenrith. Probably not. I guess that answered that question. Hawkeye's doing great, Frisky Biscuits. Yeah, he's a good, healthy cat now. Yeah, his teeth turned out to be the only thing that was, that was a problem. Everything else checked out very healthy. The custom emotes last for 24 hours. Hey, Mr. Shumway. Mm. Need that land. Oh, that Paradise Root for that mana to be able to activate Kenrith.
Um, I don't know if it was it was a fang necessarily. I don't know exactly what teeth were bothering him. Okay, but, all right, Bivalons. I guess I guess we could try it. Um. Yeah, and we could try it. With Kenner's ability to gain life, I don't need to... I don't need to um, risk my life total going down. I'm not really sure why they don't bring in Cauldron Familiar there. Block. I guess they just want to keep the sacrifice stuff open more because you know, they get to bring the Cauldron Familiar back again. Basically, I don't have to worry about my life total too much with Kenrith's ability to gain life. Hey, Radical Guru. Good evening. Could have back, brought back the Cauldron Familiar, killed my Paradise Druid, and kept theirs alive. Looks like my opponent's trying to just save up enough food to kill the Kenrith, though. That's what it looks like the plan is. They're only one food away from. Which they can do now. We'll get back Kethis. If I do this though, that's true. Yeah, that's true. I forgot about the one-one counter stuff. Yeah, I could just put one-one counters on Kenrith to save Kenrith. But what if I do this?
If I block Mayhem Devil, I could just use the four damage right away to kill the, the cat this. So that gets a lot of their ammo out of here. And of course, all it did was just my five mana. Oh, the mana to kill Kenrith, right? Can they just do one more damage? Oh, they're just gonna sack all the food to the cat. Okay, yeah. You can just Yeah, never mind. Okay. So they are killing Kenrith. Now the Mayhem Devil's gone. Now we can afford Ugin. And of course, Kethus can bring back Kenrith in a little while anyway. Uh, ends up being a very good block. That's not good. Oh, man. After all of that. Yeah, that was a top deck. Castle's pretty awesome here. Them having infinite life with these gilded geese. That castle's really nice. So plan is still to have Kenrith bring back Kethus. <clears throat> and then Kethus bring back Ugin. Could bring back Ugin and Vraska. If I had one more land. So. Bleh.
These gilded geese. They certainly won the game for my opponent. Letting, you know, turning on the Mayhem Devil, turning on this thing. These two Gilded Goose won this game. It wasn't really drawing casualties, Wicked Wolf. It was the Gilded Goose. Gooses. Hey, Kittles. Happy Wednesday. I guess I should have kept on going because they've, they've been wasting so much time. I should have just kept the game going. I probably could have got another minute off their clock. Yeah, probably could have got another minute off the clock. They're already at 18 minutes after game one. So if you... All right, let's see. I kind of want to just play the Fable Passage first. It's a good one. Because if we like ha get extra lands here that we scry to the bottom and then I crack Fable Passage, it just shuffles those lands back. It's usually best to shuffle before scry. Oh well. bothering you I'll make them suffer <laughs> I'm gonna make myself scared. I really hope I get to exile the goose I really hope the Kaya doesn't die so goose just dominated that last game I could have just exiled the goose right away and because I have other answers to witches oven but then they get to sack the goose and make a food So the problem with doing minus one on the Kaya here is if they have removal for the Knight of Autumn, they get to kill Knight of Autumn and then kill Kaya with the Cauldron Familiar. So this isn't a very good spot to minus one. 
So I'm going to tick up. Even though I guess that would mean that I'd still be able to get rid of the goose, of course, if I would have minus one. Could have just played Midnight Reaper for a blocker and ticked up also. That's the problem. I wouldn't want to minus. Yeah, that's a. I thought it was kind of likely they had Wolf. Kill this now. But they don't have. You're back from here on out. Hopefully they cannot make a food here, and we have the ability to... Got two white, three green. I guess I could just get a white. <clears throat> and we have the ability to exile the Cauldron Familiar from the graveyard. Alright, we'll take that. Hey, Zelay, what's up? How's life been? All right, Kaya's doing good work. a lot good you stop playing yeah when oko is in the meta game well there's no more oko now oh yeah yeah linda stop yeah i've been playing a lot of historic yep yeah the last stream that we had two days ago we played you know two historic decks i was planning on playing historic for the last slot until the donation deck came up Why are the cards glowing like that? It's a it's a bug. Uh, whatever sleeves your opponent is using, uh, the, the bug's been around for months. I'm surprised they haven't fixed it. But whatever sleeves your opponent is using, their card back shows up in the background of your sideboarding. This 
hand's not very good now that I really take a look at it. Guess it's not that good. Uh, don't do the space there, Timberwolf. There you go. Hey, Hawkeye. You want to come up here? What's up, Hawkeye? Got to get that thing out here. I just use the Dispark because they don't, not, you know, like, Wicked Wolf is the best Dispark target. They may not have, like, just a, a ton of Dispark targets. So while I may regret using the Dispark, if there's a Wicked Wolf, uh, there's just not a ton of targets. I'm glad we get this trailer crumbs out of here before they can use get any value out of the trailer crumbs. That's a that's a win for me. Oh cool, Diabolic Tier, my opponent's streaming too. Cool. More ovens. I guess that was last game they had all the ovens. This game this is this is the only one so far. December is with that n nasally, that, this like British sounding voice. I don't remember the, the lead singer's name. I know he's from the States, but that's just like a singing voice. It sounds very British. Corvold. Corvold's a problem. <laughs> Was the dragon getting really excited that like a, a food got sacrificed? Or something?
<clears throat> King J, why do you say that? Why do you think your Esper hero feels like it's in a bad spot right now? So I want to play Garrick. Like, I was going to play Garrick to kill the Corvold if it wasn't for Mayhem Devil. The problem with playing Garrick is, of course, is Mayhem Devil. Being able to shoot it down. So we'll go with Trophy. I mean, I guess they have to block. I guess this is a lethal attack. Hey, Joe, doing good? I'm sure they drew the Mayhem Devil off of the Sacrifice stuff with the Corvold. As far as the sequencing, I'm sure they drew it later. Alright, I don't have lethal if I put counters anywhere. Like... Just put counters over here. We just put them down to one. Let's just kill this Mayhem Devil. Get that thing out of here. Proof. We are the apex predators. The less mana they have, the better for me with the food, you know, makes it harder for them to sacrifice the food tokens. So I think we're at the point where I'll trade a hero of precinct one for paradise druid. Can you, anybody help out Brant K? Oh, let me keep the hero of Precinct 1. All right, the Apex Predators got it. Three and two. So we lost a team or adventure that outgrinded us. I think that, that makes sense. Uh, we were unable to keep our Liliana alive. They, they had a, I mean, that, yeah, that was, that was a tough matchup. Our other loss to Mardu, um, Mardu Knights, I think that was a good matchup. I think my opponent just had incredible hands and draws. And therefore, they beat us. Um, but the John Sacrifice matchup feels pretty good. You know, we went 2 0 there, but it just feels like we're favored. Um, yeah, so I, I think that I think this deck has a lot of good stuff going for it. Um, I think, you know, like that, that 3 2, or, you know, like games are always close. Like it could have gone, you know, it could be 2 3 or anything, but I, I wouldn't have been surprised with a 4 1 there at all. Um, but yeah, I like this deck, especially like if you have a lot of John sacrifice in your metagame, uh, you have it like at your local store a lot that you're playing against a lot of John sacrifice. I think Abzan hero, uh, here has a lot of good tools to fight John sacrifice with all of the ways to destroy, uh, trailer crumbs of witches ovens and things like that. 
Okay, uh, but there we go. That's that's it here for Abs and Hero. So those of y'all uh, watching on YouTube, you know what to do. Hit that like button over there, and of course, leave the comments in the comment section over on YouTube. I'd appreciate that. But thank you so much for watching some Abs and Hero, and I'll see you for the next video.